Hey everyone, welcome to Mr. Yu's Reviews. Today I'm reviewing Damien Chazelle's latest film, Babylon, uh, which follows the rises and falls of multiple characters in 1920s Hollywood, which was an era of excess in many ways, but was also the era of Hollywood where they started to transition away from silent film. First of all, let's talk about the cast in this film and this whole ensemble um, of actors here is really spectacular. Of course, Margot Robbie and Brad Pitt are both in this film, and both of their characters, um, you know, they, they really highlight the rise and fall of, uh, of just many people who were working in Hollywood at the time. I um, mean, you know, it kind of follows the main theme of, you know, people have, many actors kind of have the time that they shine, but then you know, it kind of, the light fades away on them. And I really liked seeing that with those two characters, the two characters that they play. And, you know, their characters also kind of highlight the excess in the time. Um, but I, I just appreciated how the film developed them too. So they weren't just characters that feed into the excess of Hollywood. And then you have Joven Adepo, Jean Smart, um, and Lee Jun Lee who all three kind of show the different aspects of filmmaking of Hollywood that isn't really shown on screen too much. You know, the musical aspects of Hollywood, but also um, kind of like the newspaper criticism aspect of Hollywood as people, you know, they wrote reviews for films that they would see um, and they had a major impact on people's opinions on films, whether they would go see a film or not. So it was cool seeing that aspect of Hollywood kind of examined here. Um, but then, you know, in a very short supporting role, you have Tobey Maguire, who plays this crazy character, and he just he gets into this role very well. Of course, when you first see him on screen, you think, oh, there's Tobey Maguire, because um, he's, he's shown throughout the trailers and everything. Um, but he kind of, he gets into this role where, very well. Um, so I really enjoyed seeing him in a role again because, um, you know, we haven't really seen too much of him in the past few years. We've seen him recently in some films, but, um, you know, it's cool seeing him in more films kind of back to back. But the real star of this film um, is Diego Calva, who plays Manny. He is very much like the main character of this film alongside Margot Robbie as Brad Pitt kind of plays a more supporting role here. Um, and Calva expresses so much through his kind of facial expressions and everything. And sometimes when he needs to get serious and crazy, he, he just goes there. And I haven't seen him in um, you know, any other films. I, this is the first film that I've seen him in and I hope to see more of him because he really stood out here. So overall, I thought the cast here was outstanding. Now let's talk about the technical aspects of this film. And I gotta start by talking about the directing by Damien Chazelle, who's one of my favorites. I even own two of his films, Whiplash and La La Land, and I love them both. Um, and in this film, he shows how well he can direct the film once again, because um, this is his biggest film with so many extra, so many different aspects to kind of um, make sure that they come together well. Um, and there's this 30 minute opening sequence, which I'll talk more about later on in the video. But, you know, over here to make this sequence come together must have taken a lot of planning because there's so many extras and, you know, how do you show all the crazy things going on here? Um, you know, that's what, what must have been going on in his head. but. You know, once again, he uses his long takes, these long shots, and kind of swoops through the crowd. You know, little things like that. And he does the classic thing um, that he's done in La La Land, for example, and Whiplash, where, you know, he kind of goes to a character and then either kind of whips to another character or kind of moves the camera quickly somewhere else. So it follows all the different things that are going on in this scene. I mean, I just really love his directing style. Um, and, he, and he really shows that here. Um, and you know, even the smaller scenes between two characters are very calm. He knows how to direct those scenes. So he really, his directing stood out here for sure. 
and the production design and costume design was really well done too. It really immerses you into the 1920s time period of Hollywood. But by far, the original score by Justin Hurwitz is the standout aspect of this whole film. Um, I've been listening to his score since. And just kind of in the start of the film, you hear kind of certain themes that show up again later on in the movie. But, you know, depending on the atmosphere, he might adjust the themes to be a little more bombastic, a little more upbeat or more melancholic and slowed down. And that's something that is kind of a trait of his that I noticed. And I really love that about Hurwitz's scores um, in general. And this film is, um, it's no exception. So, you know, all the technical aspects really came together very well for this film. Also, let's talk about the story and screenplay of this film. And I really enjoyed, you know, watching this story um, because you get these more dramatic emotional aspects through the characters of Manny, played by Diego Calva, Nelly, played by Margot Robbie, and Jack Conrad, played by Brad Pitt. But it's also a very comedic and funny film um, throughout because, you know, the film doesn't hold back on the craziness here. And it's, it's all very natural comedy um, as it shows kind of this transition in Hollywood. Um, but there were still some things that I think could have been improved with this story. Um, for one, you know, although this opening 30 minute sequence is very well directed, I think, you know, for the film to start with that sequence, it kind of just jolts you, shocks you with kind of explicit content right off the get go. Um, Cause you know, there's a lot of nudity and drug use and such. And there's nothing wrong with showing that because it's trying to display a certain time period of Hollywood and kind of like show a different side of it. But without really knowing too much about the main characters we're following, it kind of makes the film feel like it doesn't know where it's trying to go to at the beginning. And it just feels like it's trying to jolt you with it, its content. So I would have liked to learn a little more about the characters before we get to this big party sequence. Um, of course, they don't have to fully flesh them out because we have a full three-hour movie to analyze these characters and everything. But I would have maybe rearranged certain things with that, um, with that sequence. And also, with the ending of the film, it's obvious that Damien Chazelle is, you know, he has like a certain message, a certain theme he wants to get across about kind of the evolution of cinema. But... The way he kind of shows it towards this ending sequence especially, I don't know if it was necessarily the best way to display this theme. Because um, he, he, it kind of catches you off guard. You're like, whoa, is he really showing this scene from, you know, this certain thing and such? And I think, you know, it might have been better to really highlight this certain theme and message he's, that Chazelle is trying to uh, get across in a different way um, towards the end. But other than those aspects of the story, I really enjoyed Babylon. I thought it was a fun ride of a film full of fun, crazy sequences, great performances by um, a fantastic ensemble, really well done directing and costume design, production design, and an amazing original score by Justin Hurwitz. I think a lot of the aspects really do come together well. So overall, I give Babylon an A minus. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and feel free to follow me on Letterboxd. I'll put the link down below. And as always, don't forget your popcorn. Until next time, from Mr. You to you, stay tuned.